Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to That's answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> Did you guys watch any of the Trump town hall last night? I mean, no, I only, I mean, saw, I only saw clips well, of it on Twitter. I didn't watch it because I'm not a journalist who's horrified by it. I mean, it, you know, what what was the point of this? I mean, it, it might as well just have been like, oh, Trump exists. Yeah. Did we really have to do this again? Like, oh, he lies a lot. And CNN gate like they had a. A, uh, Caitlin Collins fact check him a lot, but they put him in front of a favorable audience. So, you know, it seemed like they were endorsing his message. And now we're going to write a bunch of articles about how that's bad. Haven't we seen this before? Can we just have anything new? No, yeah, Felix, I, I really got the impression that, like, like, seeing this and the reaction to it really gave me the impression that, like, Trump could easily win 2024 and become president again. Because I feel like we're just, it's it's this time loop that we're stuck in and like i i didn't know that it was like an audience of only trump supporters which seems i don't know perhaps unethical for cnn to agree to that but hey they wanted the ratings they wanted big donnie on tv and they got it and i'm really enjoying all of the uh the monday morning quarterbacking from the uh the the journalism quarters about saying like oh like they blew their opportunity to fact check Trump or they should have interviewed him like this or that, or like, here's the strategy. You have to keep pressing him. And I'm like, okay, here's what they should have done. The fact that they agreed to have Trump, uh, you know, platform him in this primetime spot in front of a, a sympathetic audience who was, by the way, he was killing. But what do you say to voters who say it disqualifies you from being president? Well, there aren't too many of them because my poll numbers just came out. They went up. Okay. <laughs> He was killing like Martin Lawrence at Def Jam. Like it was like they were hooting like an episode of Maury when he was talking about her cat's name was Vagina. The judge wouldn't allow us to put that in. Her dog or her cat was named Vagina. The judge wouldn't allow it to put that in. All of these things. He would, but with her, they could put in anything. I mean, <laughs> by the way, he could probably get sued again for the things he said about Eugene Carroll in the CNN town yeah. hall. But you know what? Five million dollars. He's going to do it again. No one cares. Yeah. I mean, I would be more inclined to say that, um, oh, he's definitely going to win again if we didn't have a lot of examples of his electoral acumen very recently. I mean, well, you know, how many elections do we have where he's either at the head of the ballot or greatly affecting the rest of the ballot? I Joe mean, Biden. That's the argument for him maybe winning again. Right. And it's a strong right. one. It's a, I don't it's know, a, man. I mean, it, it, this is an unprecedentedly one. unpopular uh, uh, incumbent who is just ambiently assumed to not be in charge of anything. Okay. Certainly true. And I, I, you know, I think like out of anyone except for Harris, Biden's probably like the worst person they could realistically run. To, <laughs> the only to, one worse than him is his vice president. Yeah. <laughs> but, but after seeing last night, do you think more or less people are inclined to be involved in the political process? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, it, it, it's, there, there are these countervailing forces like Trump. He repels and repels these uh, the suburbanites, but he also attracts uh, non college people of all races. It's it there. It's yeah, not like just one phenomenon. It's like it's two groups of voters responding diametrically in opposite ways, and who ends up being uh, more important is largely gonna. Uh, it, not, not I don't think really is predictable. Let me let me rephrase that. Do you think like okay between Biden and between what we've seen Trump do, and I feel like we could safely assume that Trump's you know that DeSantis is not going to provide any meaningful roadblock. Probably not. Uh, you say that, Felix, but I have an article uh, I picked out for today about how Trump is yet to land a glove on DeSantis. Oh. Okay. Like, yeah, Trump's at the weigh-in. DeSantis is in the parking lot, doing shadow boxing, jogging after a car. They're not even in the same fight. Yeah, doesn't have uh, to land a De- single DeSantis glove. DeSantis is like Conor McGregor fighting a bus right now. <laughs> uh, between the two of them, do you see more people who weren't engaged in the political process last time joining? Because I don't. I see less people. 
and less people absolutely benefits Biden. Well, that is, I say less fewer people, people because, it definitely helps Biden, but I don't know yet. I feel like it's unambiguously fewer people because there's nothing new here. This is just, ugh, this is everything we already know. Everything I see just indicates lower turnout, which to me unambiguously uh, puts Biden at an advantage. I would like to uh, like offer a solution perhaps to any other uh, TV network or any other media institution that's going to have to to deal with Donald Trump and, you know, plat the, the sticky issue of how do you plat how do you platform or not platform an ex-president and certainly someone who's, who seems to be immune to, I don't know, shame or fact checking or or being scolded by the media. And that is like, OK, the debate should be both candidates should be placed in what, it, what, what is gonna, I'm going to be calling a, a truth cube. A truth cube is like a sort of a, a plexi. It's like a man sized like plexiglass like a uh, chamber. And that there's an independent uh, panel of like real time fact checkers. And if either of the candidate, but, like Trump especially, if he says something that is factually untrue, about a foot of water is piped into the truth cube. And then just like, you know, if he if, like, you know, he so he can lie. But after about four or five lies, that water is going to be at like chest level. And, you know, if he keeps going, like there's no escape from the truth cube and he will, uh, you know, just uh, drown on, on national television. Or maybe some and sort it's of it's also uh, an opportunity for him to uh, show America the skills that had him named at one time the greatest baseball player in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, he's still got he's, uh, like just seeing him give like a basically a five minute unbroken monologue in response to his recent conviction in civil court for sex abuse. Give a five minute unbroken monologue about how he doesn't use the bathrooms at Bergdorf Goodman. I just. It, it's got that old Donnie Trump feeling to it. You know, it's going to be it's it's a potent mix. It's going to be hard to stop. And I also enjoy him taking the time to advertise Truth Social <laughs> during his interview. He says, I only use Truth Social. It's much better. Uh, he, he did call uh, Caitlin Collins a nasty person. And uh, I, I uh, they did try to pin him down on whether he wants Ukraine to win the war. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, and that he was a big fan of uh, a lot of the January 6th people are probably probably were there. It was a beautiful day for me. <laughs> he has proven that he is immune to like any of the things that the media has like, because, you know, like outside of Fox News, like January 6th was like the, the, the worst thing to happen to America, probably worse than 9-11. And, you know, I do I do kind of have to appreciate the fact that like he just completely goes the opposite direction and it doesn't harm him in the slightest. I mean, I guess that's like what people appreciate about Trump is that he has like broken the gravity well of like media, can, you know, sort of like media management and containment. Yeah. Having to pretend to care about things that like well, the thing that made me that really made me think that uh, DeSantis was not going to have it uh, even before, you know, putting gate and the his in the and the head bobble thing that he does. And he can't stop doing either. Like they, they could tell him not to do that all he want. He's only going to do it more. Uh, but. It was when he tried to be based about Ukraine. Uh, he tried to do. He tried to talk uh, about Ukraine in the based fashion, uh, and like twenty four hours later, he had to clarify his comments because none of the uh, donors that uh, he depends on wanted to hear that shit. And if you can't, if you can't do that, then you really don't offer anything to people who, at this point, really are only keying off of the the pleasure of defying those DC groupthink opinions. Sorry, I'm just looking at the, uh, the, uh, the piece about how DeSantis hasn't, uh, uh, Trump hasn't landed a glove. Trump still hasn't figured out how to land a punch on Ron DeSantis. And it's just like, he's 40 points ahead of him in the polls. <laughs> like, well, you know, he doesn't exactly need to like uh, be throwing haymakers to knock him out here. Well, he hasn't, I mean, how do you, how do you say he hasn't landed a punch? He, he won't, he won't announce He's not technically in the arena. Well, just wait. 